public records information once the confirmation of death is made, age, uh, okay, uh, residence, that type of thing that we would, that we would typically provide in death, uh, that comes from student records. And what access? We would, we would take direction from the coroner's office in terms of what, what, what will allow us to, to release at this point because it's their investigation. They still have not determined the cause of death. No, but we would know. But age, uh, place of I'm quite certain. Quite director, they would let you. Yeah, director. Yeah. Well, but it'll be their call. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. some of, if they do still regard this as a potential crime scene, they may not want some of that information right. released for whatever reason. Right? It's up to them. Okay. And we could certainly, as a group, you know, make that inquiry with them. Say, you know, yeah. Can we release the date of birth? Can we release the age? The, you know, the, uh, the resident information. But they'll kind of direct us. But, but I'm assuming that um, while this goes on, in any event, uh, Mindy's operation that is getting phone calls from students to their own families should go on and should be encouraged to go on as much as possible. And incoming phone calls from the call center are going to get Wes's message. <clears throat> 540, the Lake County Coroner requests for personal information on Ms. Liu. The body was removed from the building for transportation to the Lake County Morgue. So we've got that. I think we're, we're sort of up to that. Yeah. Can I add something yes. to this? Um, unfortunately, I worked at a university that this actually happened at. And what they did was they pulled um, the ambulance around to, I, I would recommend one of the back right. side entrances right up to the to the building to remove the body so that to lessen any traumatic experience by any student, made sure the hallways were clear and that it was a very streamlined and quick process to remove the body and not traumatize further the communities. Yes. Good piece of advice. <clears throat> from a search of the housing records, it is determined that Ms. Liu is a student from the People's Republic of China. So we would need uh, Probably, as we said, to have a uh, somebody who is an interpreter on hand in case Ms. Liu's parents uh, are not uh, functional in English. Somebody who's you know able to speak to them in their native language. Chinese student organization can provide help in that regard. They may even know Ms. Liu personally. Yeah. Or there may be a faculty member, and we can determine that from the advice. Yeah, it may be a faculty member, maybe better for them. The students who know it may traumatize them. The faculty advisor would be this yeah, thing in, the, in the call. The call might actually go um, from us to a Chinese official there in their town. That may be much like what we do here to a police official there who will actually. Uh, face to face. Do, do, the, the yeah, do the face to face notification. Yeah. We would still want somebody here who could talk to that official exactly. to be sure that there's no miscommunication. Well, don't forget we have that language line service that we have an interpreter available for that purpose. Yeah. But we have a number of faculty members who are available. Mm -hmm. Kathy? I would recommend. Um, Choosing someone who is older, perhaps a faculty member, because we wouldn't want a student in that situation to overreact. It might be a better inclination for an adult, uh, an older adult, to make more And then the student could take more responsibility for looking at the students. And I think maybe for the parents and their faculty member, more confident. It's also very important to whoever makes that call, make certain that that individual leaves a name and a number because the parent will have a million questions as soon as he or she hangs up the phone. So that, that would raise a subject to his Who would that be? Whoever, whoever's placing the call needs to make no, sure. No, I mean, who? Who would place the call back to? Who would place the call back to? Yeah. 
who should they call back to? What numbers should they be given and who should they call back to? You? Well, no, I think, well, I mean, they certainly could call me, but my thought was that they would call to the person who was making the call to them and form them because okay. that person will have the most information. And, and the language. Itself. And the language, right, capabilities. We have to think about the time difference here. That's right. Right. About 12 hours. Because we have somebody with that person that may be called to Maybe, maybe by the side of that individual, should the parents ask additional questions beyond the knowledge of the person who does that call? That would be fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, Why have we missed? Students in that suite may want to be relocated for the rest of the year. That's right. The students in that suite may wish to be relocated for the rest of the year. That's quite possible. <clears throat> Is there enough space here to accommodate with some degree of privacy individuals who may need to talk to a counselor? We've got, I think so. we've got an awful lot of wild just through class. We've got yeah. They are, but I, I think we have enough space we could at least do five or six at one time. Um, we could get over there. We don't know what say. We may need to we may need to right. open the yeah. that, that, that would be no problem. Anything else? I think because of the tightness among the uh, Chinese community here, we may want to have a communication with the Chinese students uh, uh, perhaps through their organization. Maybe counseling service if possible. And I think too to put out a distribution fee to members of the faculty so that they know the following morning there will be some students who are very traumatized would be appropriate as well. Okay. I'm wondering from a legal standpoint if we need to report the call to the parents or to the uh, city official. Report it? So somehow or other to, not, to keep a record of we call the parents or we call the city official at a certain time. And somebody was notified at a certain time. You, you should keep that right. Okay. Don't worry. I've still got an audio tape. Oh, I've just, your, your notes are going to At 5.50, the University Village receptionist reports that a woman identifying herself as Mrs. Lee, mother of Janet Lee, has arrived at the front desk to demand to know if her daughter is okay. We don't actually know who Janet Lee is. We might be able to find that out, but we do have counselors on the premises. So we probably want to get this woman. We hopefully by that time we would have located that that student and told her to call her mother. So that's to try to eliminate that possibility of yeah. or we can repeat the message we gave her earlier that right. you know, the, the person mm -hmm. that, who's been who's deceased is not her daughter. She's obviously having a hard time yeah. accepting right. that that is just, you know, that you're being entirely truthful. Right. So I'm listen to Channel 2 News. <laughs> right. Or there are two bodies. So I think, you know, I think if it's possible to track down this student, right. Right. then we would try and do that if somebody. We'd probably send an RA out to, uh, to, to go up to the room if we had a record of that person living in the village. If that, if that person lives in the village. 